May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Throughout um, Lent, we are, um, you might have noticed a theme in our Old Testament lessons in which there are stories um, of calling and covenant in which God again and again and again um, redeems and renews the covenant that he has made with God's people. And no matter what it is that we do and the ways in which we fail to uphold and live up to the covenant, God continues to renew that covenant. Talked about this a little bit last week in which um, when God and Abraham made the covenant, God is the one who sealed the covenant by walking um, through um, the, the, the animal pathway that had been made. In today's Old Testament lesson, we hear this story of Moses, and it's one of my um, absolute favorite um, call stories. And what's happened is, is that if you remember the story of Moses, Moses was born um, as a Hebrew, um, and uh, the Pharaoh began to be worried about how the Hebrews were growing in number and might and what happens if they overtake the Egyptians? And so the, the Pharaoh's answer is, well, we'll just go and we'll kill um, the young Hebrew boys. And, um, and, and Moses' mom puts him in the little reed basket, floats him down the river, in which then uh, a member of the Pharaoh's court finds him and raises him. So he, um, though born a Hebrew, um, grows up in the Pharaoh's court as a, as a son. And one day, Moses is observing um, the, the you know, people working, and he sees an Egyptian who is being cruel and mean to a Hebrew, and um, Moses snaps, and Moses kills the Egyptian. So he goes into the witness protection program, flees Egypt, and he goes to this place called Midian. And um, he ends up marrying um, the, a priest of Midian, Jethro's daughter, and he is just living his life in the hills of Midian, watching Jethro's sheep uh, or, or livestock, whatever it is. And, and he has like no sense that there's anything else that he should be doing. He thinks that his life that he once had is gone forever. And God shows up to Moses. God hears the cries of the Hebrews who are living in slavery. God hears the cries of those who are oppressed and will not let those cries go unanswered. And so God comes to Moses when, when, when Moses is not looking for God. Right, I mean, this is, this is like sort of the amazing part of this story. Moses is not sitting there in the hills of Midian saying, you know, one day I'm going to return or, you know, I'm going to pray on what God's call on my life is going to be. Moses has walked away from that forever and God shows up to Moses and says, Moses, I have not forgotten my people and I've got something I need you to do. That God has met Moses in a low point of his life. That he has forgotten who he is. And he has even forgotten God's name. Did you catch that in that reading? Moses sits there and he has you know, this conversation with the burning bush. And he says, now, what am I supposed to call you again? Like we all have, like I, I was sitting there and I was thinking about there was this family that grew up across the street from me. They were a little bit older. They had grandchildren that were my age, and they lived in North Carolina, but they came several times, and anytime time they came, I was always, like, playing with them and going to the zoo with them or the Omniplex. And, and I sat there, and I thought, now, now, what's their name? Right? There's something in my mind. Or maybe you've had that moment where you know, like, you see someone, you're like, oh, gosh, I know them now. I'm trying to figure out. Moses is not, like, Moses has completely forgotten it. Moses is not trying to go, okay, okay. Moses is like, I don't even know who you are anymore. I mean, that's how far away he is from God. And God still shows up in his life and says, Moses, I've got something for you. So, so God tells Moses, 
I am who I am. It's a really kind of weird way in which God is really trying to say, I am that which always has been, always is, and always will be. The voice translation of the Bible puts it this way, that God is the eternal one. God is whatever is eternal. God is that thing that, that has no beginning and has no end, that God is always there. Now, for those of us who um, are readers of Scripture, you know that in John's Gospel, Jesus uses this name when he's telling stories. I am the Good Shepherd. I am the Bread of Life. I am the Living Water. And Jesus is making an explicit claim on being equal with God when he does this. So Moses has forgotten God's name. God says, look, I am the thing that is the most real that you could ever imagine. And in fact, Moses, when you had forgotten me, I hadn't forgotten you. Now I have something for you to do. There's real power in this idea of a God who refuses to forget us. We sort of like the stories like Rudy, where Rudy has this dream that he has placed on his own life and, you know, you can't help but tear up when he finally gets to run out onto the field and you're like, yes, way to, way to you know, fulfill your destiny. But imagine the miracle of a story in which we didn't even know what that destiny is and God places it for us. Places it to a person who has forgotten who God is and places it to a person who has killed another human being. But God says, I'm still going to find redemption in your life. I want to turn now to the gospel story. There is this event that has happened in which people were killed while working on a tower. And, and people come to Jesus and they say, hey, Jesus, who sinned? Who is the cause of of this, um, this, this horrific event. And Jesus' basic answer is, is like, God does not cause punishment because of our sin. Right? This flies exactly in the face of everything that Pat Robertson has ever said on the 700 Club. <laughs> right? Every time that there's a hurricane coming, Pat's like, well, you know, there's gay people in Orlando, Florida, and so he's come to take out that city. Or, you know, he sits there and he says, oh, Russia and Ukraine are fighting because God is having them fight so we can have World War III, and that way the Messiah can come. And it's like, that's not how God works. That's what, that's what Jesus is telling them. You sit there and you think God works in, 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 in vengeful ways, and Jesus says, that is not the God that I know. If you want to have some proof, there's some stories and trails of this in that Old Testament story of Moses encountering the burning bush because it does not burn up and destroy. God's justice and righteousness does not demand our destruction. God is able to redeem when we think that there is nothing to redeem. And so Jesus sits there and he goes, look. Here's the great news. You all are all miserable sinners. And God, if God's going to start striking people down, guess what? None of you are getting out. But we have a God who is merciful and just and gracious. And to prove his point further, he goes and he tells this story of a vineyard. And there's this tree in the garden that will not bear fruit. And the owner wants to come and cut it down. This thing is a waste of my time. It's a waste of my resources. This is good land. And if I take it out, I can put another one in its place. And so the gardener, who is probably Jesus, um, pulls out the Don Dyer rule. Which is, when in doubt, put some manure on it. And so, so, so the gardener's like, go and let's, let's, let's till this land. Let's improve it. Let's, let's put some manure on it and let's see what happens. 
Not one year, not two years, three years. God does not give up on us no matter what. And that is really good news for us. Because no matter what it is that we have done or we have not done, we have a God who meets us at that place and says, I have something for you to do. We rather like the God who punishes the unjust. We rather like the God who says to the person who has done something horrific, you are dead to me forever, but it's not the God that we find in Scripture and not the God that we find in Jesus. I wonder this morning what it is that you maybe have ran into witness protection from. I'm wondering what part of you thinks that is irredeemable by God. I wonder where in your life you just need to put some manure in it. And I wonder what God has in store for you. Amen.